Hello, my name is Dan Hennen. Today is April 25th, 2019, and I'll be providing a broadcast on the Crowley case updates. Tonight's episode is called The Curious Case of Dan Crowley Sr. Uh, the Crowleys were found January in 20, uh, 2015, David uh, Crowley, his wife, Comel, and their daughter, Ronnie. And so um, after that point, the police uh, concluded their investigation a year later and concluded that David Crowley killed his daughter, his wife, and then ultimately uh, killed himself. And that is where we are today. The case is closed. Um, Apple Valley police detectives are not interested in reopening it, um, re regardless of what um, is provided to them. So about a year ago, the phone records were released from AT&T from the mobile phones of the family members. And tonight's episode is going to be going over a little bit of um, the phone records of what was documented um, as evidence of the phone records um, relating to David Crowley himself and um, some commentary that was provided to law enforcement from David's father, Dan Crowley Sr. So let's get into it. On page 64 of the 94-page police report from the Apple Valley Police Department, we see the following timeline put together by the Crowley family, um, submitted by uh, Dan Crowley Sr., gave this, uh, presented this timeline to Apple Valley detectives to put together the uh, various uh, texts and responses back and forth from the communications, from the alleged communication between David and his father, uh, Dan Sr. So here's what we get. I'll read them through early November. DJ, that's Dan Jr., that's David's older brother, Dan Jr. DJ texted David saying he loves him and would like to make things right. No response. November 7th, I text David to see if he's still alive. On after finding, he gave DJ his new phone number. And remember in October, David Crowley and Comel each get new phone numbers with a new account and a phone a cell phone subscription with AT&T after canceling their old service they now have a new one November 8th he replies that everything is great family life had swept them away I reply how are the negotiations going with the producers he replied on November 9th I walked from it reasons of the spirit I guess November 16th I ask him to join us at my sister's for Thanksgiving November 18th, he replied that they wanted to stay home this year, but thanks. So this is the a testimony Dan Crowley Sr. provides the law enforcement. And so what I'm going to do is highlight each one of these and then compare it with the notes. Now the AT&T phone record log I've got a screenshot image right here of the te uh, text, texts that were sent and received from David Crowley's phone number with his new T, with his new AT&T phone line. It shows the text coming in and the text going out. There's a lot of them here. It's three pages long, and I think there's 70, a total of 77 texts David sends and or receives in this three-month period from October from getting the phone to November to December and then they end in December uh, 24th is the very last text communication and authorities believe the bodies were uh, the murders took place the 25th or 26th of this December right around Christmas time of 2014 so all of these items mention the date range for these items are all November beginning of November all the way through to the 18th. So what I'm going to do, not to make it too confusing for, uh, for folks uh, watching this broadcast, we're not gonna go through all these, I'm just gonna strip through the items that relate to the text activity for David Crowley in the month of November only. 
And here they are. If you see the line items on the AT&T bill on the far left, item lines 59 through 74 are connectivity dates for texts that range from November 3rd through November 22nd. And um, what follows on the next page is all items in December, which is not part of tonight, uh, tonight's broadcast. So this is, we're just focusing on November only. So first item here is early November, DJ text David saying he loves him, wants to make things right. Incoming text, early November. Well, we know Dan Crowley's phone number <clears throat> and we can see the in and outgoing uh, communications here. Uh, let's focus only on the incoming. I've got the incoming texts. There's, um, I think there's 12 of them. The first texts coming in are November 3rd, November 3rd, November 4th, and November 8th, it appears. So beginning of November, I'm guessing it's one of those three that are coming in. And so, I'm going to pull up the spreadsheet of a simple version of these um, first three coming in. We can see the th first three coming in uh, from an individual named Richard Deben Nadetti from Illinois. A couple of those coming in from him. Also, the beginning of the month was Zach Carter, a gentleman in Washington. So I don't see any, any support, any evidence to support a text coming in from DJ, which is Dan Jr. No response. So I would have to, um, I, don't, I don't believe there's any support for that first item. Let's go to the second item. November 7th, I text David to see if he's still alive <clears throat> after giving DJ his new phone number. So let's go to November 7th. Incoming text. There is no incoming text. Uh, we see one on the 4th and then on the, and not again until the 8th. So I don't see anything there to support a text. Uh, this is coming from Dan Sr. Wondering if he's still alive. Now this also may be planting the seed of uh, to the investigators that, that he was dis depressed, despondent, and, and, and what have you. But um, I don't believe there's support that exists for this text at all. November 8th, looks like David replies, everything's great, family has swept, her, uh, swept them away. And then Dan Sr., the father, replies, how are the negotiations going with the producers? So we get an incoming and an outgoing on the 8th. We do some, we do see some uh, incoming and outgoing on the eighth. In fact, four of them in the blocked area here, right in the middle. There's four. Um, Zach Carter from Washington had had some ins and outs. One, two, three. Looks like four texts back and forth from Zach Carter on the eighth. Nothing from Dan Crowley Sr. The father. Nothing from the father. Um, at all. Uh, now we do get one from Dan Crowley Jr. on the 8th. Uh, that comes in around 11, um, 11.07 p.m. that night. But this is um, this is Dan Crowley Sr. Um, mentioning this correspondence here back and forth texts between him and his and his son. And so uh, negotiations with the Producers. Now we know the David was in communication with MEG, the Michael Entertainment Group, about his movie. And so that's correct. He was in negotiations um, with them. Let's go to the next one. He replied, this is David now, uh, alleging, David replied on November 9th, I walked from it. Reasons of the spirit, I guess. Now this one drew some criticism earlier, early on after we interviewed um, the uh, president at Michael Entertainment Group and saying that they um, he never walked away from the deal and Meg never walked away from David. They had a, uh, a pending 
contract, a verbal contract, to move forward with this web series uh, movie or project. And so this 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 concept, uh, this this uh, item drew criticism early on, saying I walked from it, reasons of the spirit, I guess, because no way, there's no evidence to support that David ever uh, walked from this at all. So we're wondering why Dan Crowley introduces this this concept or this narrative here into the police reports. So he says on the 9th that he walked from it. And now we don't see any text here at all on November 9th at all. So no texts on the 9th. Now the next one is November 16th, Dan Crowley Sr. asks, I asked him to join us at my sister's for Thanksgiving on November 16th. And as we can tell here, look back on the incoming texts. We do see the 15th, November 15th. And then nothing until the 20th. 15th and the 20th, so nothing on the 16th. <clears throat> in fact, if you look of uh, who he's corresponding here, um, on the right side I've got listed the underneath the who is who he's communicating with. Um, there's no Dan Crowley Sr. at all. So there's 16 texts incoming and outgoing in the entire month of November on David Crowley's new phone. Never once does he send a text to his father, Dan Sr., who lives in Owatonna. And never once does he receive a text from Dan Crowley Sr. into David Crowley's. So there's no communication there at all uh, uh, via text. And there may have been phone calls and the phone records, but the, uh, the point of this, um, of this episode is strictly the text. The correspondence between the texts, between the father and the son. The next one, November 18th, he replied that he wanted to stay home this year, but thanks. So a nice comment there uh, saying they couldn't make it, but uh, thanks again for the invitation, Dad. And this is the 18th, he replied back. So let's go to the outgoing, outgoing here I've got in the uh, bluish color. And there's no outgoing calls. In fact, there's only four outgoing texts the entire month of November from David Crowley. And like I said, none, none included his father. So it doesn't, we, we, don't, we can't even verify that there was an invite for Thanksgiving here at all by looking at this information. And by looking further into the different uh, various names, we see a, uh, a lot of Zach Carter living in Washington. Now, Zach Carter, if you remember, was with the Michael Entertainment Group. Zach Carter here is pictured second from the left, uh, meeting with David Crowley here. Um, I believe this was in L.A. Um, with the contract negotiations in the summer of 2014. This image may even be from the fall, maybe September time frame, possibly even uh, June. You can leave your comments below if you, if you know the date, but it's sometime in 2014 with the negotiations with Meg. Now Michael Entertainment Group is the company, it's the initials for MEG, Michael Entertainment Group. Both officers, their uh, uh, partners in the firm are both named Mike. On the far left is Mike Boggio. And on the far right is Michael O'Donnell. Those are the two Mikes. They run a, a, an outfit called Michael Entertainment Group. Uh, Zach Carter is also working with them. He's pictured here with the reddish looking goatee, second from the left. So we know that David Crowley is in correspondence with Zach Carter um, several times during the month. Uh, and gets a couple of texts incoming with no response to from a Richard uh, Debenedati. And then a couple from Dan Crowley, J. 
Jr., who, which is David's older brother that he doesn't respond to. Um, and they were fighting at the time back in the month of August. And so that's why I, I believe that's why it sounds like they're trying to work on things there. The very first um, one says that, that that's the reason for saying that he loves him, likes to make things right. Those, these two were in um, some, tor- some sort of conflict in August. And now we get into the end of November. And um, other than a couple of, uh, looks like, potentially spam texts coming in there um, that don't have the, the regular 10-digit phone numbers. But what we're seeing here is what I see is, is two things. Number one, David Crowley has not ever sent a text in the month of November or received a text from his father in that month. The other thing... And looking back at these comments from Dan Crowley Sr. that he provides law enforcement, is uh, it leaves, leaves the illusion that they're corresponding, that, they're, that their uh, texts are being sent back and forth, they're on good terms, they're, um, they're chatting, and, and, everything's, and everything's fine with a lot of these conversations. But what we see in the, in the evidence is that uh, there's no correspondence whatsoever, much less conversations going on. And so what we're left with is to, is to suspect, or is to, really the, the question is to, uh, why would Dan Crowley Sr. lie to investigators? Um, uh, why would he give this information to detectives when it's not accurate and not supported by uh, uh, the, the evidence or the facts? And so that's the main question. Um, why? Why was that? Why was that done? I don't know. Uh, we can only hope that when detectives followed up um, with these notes and narratives, when the police, uh, when the warrants came back for these uh, phone records, I'm assuming they followed up on each one of these um, instances. We don't have any narrative as far as what they found or what they concluded by these types of things. But we can only assume that they did follow up and, and ask. Dan Sr., the follow-up questions as far as these things not making sense. But um, please leave your comments below. Um, I just found this very interesting and wanted to get this out there. Once again, today is April 25th, 2019. My name is Dan Hennon. Thanks for listening.